Hello, everyone, and welcome to Local Chat, episode 103. That's right, folks, we're getting up there, and someday we'll get Social Security. Joining me this week, as always, is a man who hates the government. <laughs> it's Ian Gibson. Uh, well, I have some bad news about Social Security. We probably won't be getting it. <laughs> so, you know those old people? All those years, all they cared about was like Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. I'm starting to understand why. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Also joining us, Jake Terrio. First time on the new pod. I also hate the government. I hate the government, and I hate old people. Let's throw them all into the sun. <laughs> That's um, expensive, though. We don't have an affordable means to do that yet. No, I'll build a ladder. They're working on those, which is like a big, like slingshot that spins up really fast and then shoots stuff into orbit. Oh, can I go on the big, 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 big slingshot? Uh, for, you'll oh, you'll melt Cream in there. um in uh david foster wallace's infinite jest one of the like side jokes he has is that the u.s and canada their relations get so bad at some point that the u.s just starts catapulting all of our garbage across the northern border <laughs> <laughs> i love it i would do that that's smart that's ingenuity. We're literally just like, we don't give a shit about that country. They can't do anything about it. So we're just going to all of our all of our trash catapult across the border. They just keep apologizing about it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, well, sorry if we did anything. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you lovely trash here. I'll pay you bills. Um, oh, I'm sorry, but it uh, looks like your trash <laughs> fell on us. <laughs> trash are getting away from us. I'm sorry. Oh. I immigrated from Ireland to Canada a few years there's, ago. <laughs> there's a sketch there, right? Which is like Canadian IRA. There's a... Oh, I'm sorry about the car is bombs. There, what? Is there a sketch there? <laughs> oh, so sorry about is. the car bombs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, left me an armor light. Oh, I don't know, man. Just a bit of trouble. Um, <laughs> sorry anyways, about the trouble. Folks, we're here to sorry talk about the about troubles. <laughs> we're here to talk about video <laughs> games. Stop. That was my joke, Ian. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, moving on. Uh, it's 2023. This is the first episode of 2023, I realize now. Because according <laughs> to the date, it's the 5th right now. And you know what seven <laughs> days ago was? It was the 29th, if I can do math. Oh, I can't. I bet math where you like cross a month boundary. I can never do it. I, it's too I tough. only know it because I saw the previous episode like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> And I remember I had to change it because we recorded on Friday, but I put it to the Thursday date like a Ugh. nasty boy. Savage. Um, <laughs> we're here to talk about video games. Uh, Ian has written here in the chit chat section. Please do not mention my rash. So we're not going to do that. But we are going to mention the New Year's resolutions. Uh, I'm a cool 1920 by 1080. Uh, not sure about you guys. No, you're that you're that weird ass widescreen. What is that widescreen? Isn't it like five thousand by ten eighty or something? What my what? big widescreen boy? Yeah, the widescreen boy you had for a while. What uh, was that resolution? Let me hit display d display settings here. Uh, it is no, it's twenty five sixty by ten eighty. It's not that crazy. Oh, that's it's not that good. I thought it was at least fourteen forty tall, but and then and then my one below it's twenty five sixty by fourteen forty. But it it can do four K. It's just recommended to not do that. So I don't do it. Um, Wait. I'm sorry. What do you mean it's recommended not well, to do Well, like, that? sorry, like you, it's not a 4K monitor, but you can spout oh, the resolution super higher. Scary. Yeah, yeah, that's stupid. That's yeah. never. So the recommended it. one, I, I just leave it on because it'll burn it out. Yeah. Um, Boys, do you have any lovely New Year's resolutions you'd like to share with the class? Yeah, Jake, I see you shaking your head no, so you go first. I mean, not really. I have things that I want to do, but they're not like resolutions. Yeah, I want to finish fine. writing my second novel. Steve okay. Seagal. What's I'm like, the, I'm going to, I'm going to do some quick math. Okay. Uh, I think you kind of already started. What's the total word count? What are you at so far? How much is left? And then let's try and rough that out to like how many pages per week or whatever. Based on um, my previous novel which is seventy four thousand words and 22 chapters i have mm -hmm. outlined 26 chapters so i'm okay. thinking it's it's about 
between 2,500 and 3,000 words a chapter, so it's going to be like 80,000-ish. Or yeah. 80, 80, 80, between 80 and 90,000. I'm 20,000 okay. words in so far. Okay, so let's say let's say let's say sixty thousand left. You got a full year. That is sixty thousand divided by twelve, which is five thousand a month. If it's leisurely, is, if I can just keep up with actually, it. Actually, yeah, that's that's I don't want to say only, but that's twelve hundred words a week. Mm -hmm. That's doable. That that's is doable. doable. I would never do that. I'm too lazy. <laughs> but that is doable. Same. Who was it's it? Really it's, it's either it's either Stephen King. Or Jack London, who said they would wake up every morning and write a thousand words before breakfast. It I don't was remember. I don't think it was Jack London, but Stephen King talked about them in his on writing book. So okay, yeah. by proxy, you're pretty close because I've read that book and I know that story as well. But but I think the thing is that person they would only write a thousand words and then they wouldn't do anything else. They would just go about their day. Yeah, mine and definitely they just wrote a bunch of books like that. Like one day I might write. 300 words and then the next day i might write 4,000 words just yeah, depends yeah. i would do i would do a much slower pace but i would do that with screenwriting i would try and write at least one page a day but some days i would do like three to ten and like that was my brush in screenwriting because yeah. if it starts much, yeah. if it starts getting going you don't want to stop it exactly yeah you got to go till you finish i like edging <laughs> um you know <laughs> do you have any new year's resolutions I do have I have one that I've kind of had on the back burner for honestly a couple of years, but it's time. Have you guys heard of the sight and sound list? Yes. Uh, Jake Smart. Will's dumb. No, I'm just kidding. It's a little bit of a niche thing. It actually kind of blew up this year a little bit on Twitter, which is interesting. So basically sight and sound is a magazine put out by the British Film Institute. And basically what they've been doing, I believe, since the 50s is every 10 years they poll film critics and they say, what are your top 20 movies of all time? And they compile that list into the top 100 movies of all time as picked by critics. They do a secondary list the last couple decades for directors, but it's uh, it's not I don't want to say not as important, but it's not as prestigious as the critics list, which has been around for like 70 years now, I believe. And so my New Year's resolution is to watch the top 100 movies of all time, according to the sight and sound list. Um, with the caveat that if I've already seen a movie and I can remember most of it, then it's off the list. So I'm only starting with about 80 movies, but I've already seen two of them, um, which is it's good because the problem I have with movies is I like movies, but I tend not to watch highbrow artistic movies because it's like it's like it's kind of like you can't have a five course meal, three meals a day. You sure. know, <laughs> and they demand so, your attention. Usually they do. Absolutely. But then I use that as an excuse to just never watch them because I'm like, oh, it's not ready. It's not quite the time. I'm not in the right mind frame. But this is hopefully going to force me through that. So like last night, I was like, it's time to watch one of these movies. I tried to watch The General, the Buster Keaton movie. Oh, mm. great movie. I had two problems with it. Number one, I started watching it on. I think it was on the Roku channel or the Plex channel, and it was in color. And I was like. That's not right. This is a black and white film from the I think it's either the teens or the 20s. And I was like, this should not be in color. Well, they could have hand painted so, each frame. They they did. It, it was like a bad colorization, but I was still like, no, I want this mm. in the original black and white. So I stopped watching it. I went to another service. They also had the color version. I stopped watching. I went to another service. They also had the color version. I was getting pretty pissed. And then I found a service that had the black and white version. But the background music was different. And this is a silent movie. Mm. And it was like it was like 70s disco background music. And I was like, that's <laughs> not right. So somehow, somewhere, I need to find a version of the general that is both correct visually and musically. Probably uh, from like archive. Criter yeah, archive or like criterion if they have it. But yeah. but I, I, I'm sitting there trying to watch and I only have a limited amount of time. So I was like, screw it. So I ended up watching Bicycle Thieves, which is a... 40s Italian movie that I've always seen on lists and I never got around to watching it. It turns out very good movie. So that's my that's my resolution is just force myself to watch literally the greatest movies of all time cuz normally I'm too lazy to do it and I'm pretty excited. I got 78 movies oh, left. Man. It's going to be fun. There's some there's some I, it's weird. So I grew up on like black and white movies and not really artsy movies, but there are some like, childhood bangers on this list. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, like North by Northwest, 
Casablanca, uh, which I'm sure you've probably already seen. Yes. Um, North by Northwest I've already seen. I was trying to see if uh, Maltese Falcon was on here because I watched it the other night and I printed a Maltese Falcon. Oh, look uh, at you. Which I now need to paint uh, to look like uh, Ebony, I think it is. Yes, to look like Humphrey Bogart. Um, It's not full size. I want to print a full size one. And uh, there's like a famous photo of Humphrey Bogart holding it and like recreate it. But uh, nice. anyway, so that's a really good resolution. I applaud you for yeah. that, sir. So just um, to um, just to round out the list, just to give you an idea of what's on this list, the number one movie, which I believe has been number one for a couple times now, is in the last 20 or 30 years, is a French movie called Jean Dormant. And it's like this woman and it's literally her full address is the name of the movie. And I'm excited for it because it's one of those movies where it's like a 60s French movie. And not that I hate that, but I've never heard of it. Looking at it, I probably would have never chosen to watch it on my own. But it keeps ending up number one on these critic lists. Even on the director's list, it was in like the top five. So I'm like, this is a banger fucking movie I've never heard of before. I never would watch that. I'm excited to watch at some point this year. That's great. Yeah, I, um, The General was also a childhood movie. The, although, I don't know if it was the full The General or just, like, um, scenes it's like an from hour, it. I think it's an hour 15, the yeah, full movie. Yeah, because I, I distinctly remember there's, like, one scene where he's on the tracks and he's throwing the wood to knock them out of the way. Yeah. And then, like, loading the cannon and all that stuff. So, um, wow, you just recalled that all back to me. Uh, my New Year's resolutions are the fact that I should make New Year's resolutions. I should try that this year. Um, I was trying to think of one quickly. Uh, really... I know this is this is a little bit of a joke, but I don't do New Year's resolutions every year because it literally takes me about a year to be like, I should do this. Let me wait for New Year's. Is that a good yeah. one? And then by the time New Year's rolls around every other New Year's, I'm like, all right, I've got one in my pocket. It's been there for nine months, you know? Yeah, I think I, for, I think my New Year's resolution is to actually get some videos out <laughs> and like do them. <laughs> write a script um yeah that's a good one that's pretty much it i don't have much um i was gonna say reading but yeah e3 would be nice but uh yeah anyways uh moving on here to the games we have been playing this week uh i'm gonna go quick because i have only played um three games this week one of them being melvor idol which ian has talked about at length it is runescape without the graphics I need to be clear here. I never recommended this game. I no, said no, 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 no. I don't think don't you recommend you dare it. recommend it. It's no. not a good game. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoy it. I will never recommend it. Yeah. Um, I bought it on the Steam sale. I bought a bunch of games on the Steam sale. Classic Will uh, that I need to play through and give my opinion on over the next coming weeks. But Melvore Idol, it's an idle game. It's fun because it mostly tickles the RuneScape itch without having to walk around the world of runescape which has a dumb name that i can't remember um what's it called so that's kind of nice and then i can just leave it going um yeah it, no recommendation here but if you like runescape and you don't want to play 3d runescape check out melvor idol i had problems syncing it between mobile and the desktop version really it, it kept being like oh your cloud save and your local save and then it would yell at me all the time so I might try again now I, that I have I, it up and running. So I think you need the account. I think you need to have like the Melvin yeah. Idol account, but you can't let you can't have them both running at the same time. I know that sounds obvious, but I found it was very, very nice because when you logged in, it was literally like, this is your cloud save. This is the timestamp of it. Do you yeah. want this save? Like it, it's, it's as opposed to the problem I have with the Xbox one is that Xbox Cloud Save between PC and console, they don't show any of that. They just do it. And the 20% of the time that it doesn't work, it's very frustrating because there's no easy way for you to like figure out the timestamp, force it to resync, pick your save file. So I almost like the fact that they're in, they're like yelling at you in your face all the time being like, this is your cloud save. Do you want this or do you want your local? You know? Yeah. So I started on mobile and then I bought it on PC and it had no record of my mobile save at all were you logged in yeah and so i tried to resave on on the phone and do it all that and it still wouldn't show up so i just started a new character on the pc and then that showed up on the phone and i was like "Ah, i don't really want to play on my phone so i deleted the app which now i do want to play on my phone so i might re-download the app 
Um, but I just leave it running during the day while I'm working. Um, and uh, it's fun. Another game. It's I, not. It's not fun. It's, it's no, it's, it's not like, fun. It just I don't mean to brain. take over, but it's like the worst. Incre- it's the worst version of incremental idle games because it is zero of the satisfaction and 100 percent of the addiction. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. So it's, things don't it's, just automatically happen. Like your bank fills up and then you're like, ah, oh, it really doesn't teach yeah, it's you that a much. Babysitting. Like yeah. I didn't realize I could buy more bank space. <laughs> And yeah. then I was like, oh, I can. So I bought it. It's like, I, I don't know a lot about a, drugs, but it's like if there was a drug that was highly addictive, but was not fun at all. You know, like, like at least yeah. like, like heroin makes you feel really good. Cocaine puts you in like a really nice mood and all this stuff. But what if, what if it just did nothing, but it was just super addictive? And that's what Melvor Idol is like. It's like cigarettes. I was going to yeah. say that. Actually, it's exactly <laughs> like cigarettes. <laughs> And you're like, fuck, I got to change my, f- I got to, I got to go smoke slash, you know, empty my fucking bag because it's full. Hey boss, I don't think it's fair that Will gets Melvor idle breaks. <laughs> Shouldn't we all get this? It's, it's so, that's so true. It is. It's cigarettes. It's fucking cigarettes. It's terrible. You're not even cool. You're not even vaping. It's just fucking <laughs> cigarettes. Oh, the little holes. Um, The other games I've been playing, uh, Pokemon Emerald I started up. Uh, I don't... Oh, I was watching a streamer do a Nuzlocke run, like a jokey speedrun Nuzlocke run with a randomizer. And I was like, oh, I could play, like, Ruby. And then I was like, oh, I could play Ruby on the 3DS. And then I was like, nah, let me play Emerald on my analog pocket. Real quick. Which one's Emerald? Is that the second DS one? No, so Sapphire and Ruby are the Game Boy Advance ones. And it was after that Oh. Yeah, and then Emerald is the co- combination of those two. And after. that's second gen? No, it's technically third gen. Red, blue is first gen. What's Gold, silver. Gold, silver. Gold, silver. Oh, I didn't realize gold, and silver counted as second sapphire gen. Sapphire is the combination of gold and silver. Then okay. it's ruby, sapphire, then emerald. Then it's the fire red and leaf green remakes. Gold, silver. Sorry, I don't mean to harp at this. So I'm just trying to place Pokemon Emerald. Is that the first or second Pokemon game on GBA? It's the, f- well, it's the third Pokemon GBA. Well, not counting Fire, Red, Leaf, Green, but like. So it was Ruby and Sapphire. Are the 1. first 1.5 is the first two that came out at the okay. same time. And then well, Emerald. Sorry, so I mean, it's, it's, it's the second gen that was on GBA. It's the first gen that was on GBA. Gold and Sapphire were on Game Boy okay. Color. Okay. Yeah. No, this is my fault. I when I, I said game, but I really meant gen. So it is the first. It is Pokemon Emerald is the first gen on GBA. Yes. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. That places Emerald, it in Sapphire, my head for me. And Ruby. I just didn't okay. want you to, because Emerald is the combo one. That's why I wanted you to make sure you placed it after. Um. Anyway, so I was playing that a bunch, and I was like going through the Pokemon screen. I was like, oh, that's weird. The d-pad up doesn't work on the pokemon screen i was like that's weird i guess it never works and so i mentioned it to karen and she was like no something's wrong with your game were you holding it sideways and oh yeah uh and i was like um that's weird so i i went and got a different rom i re i redumped my rom of emerald and put that back on the analog pocket and i tried it again it still wasn't working I was like, oh, that's super weird. Meanwhile, I can walk up. I, every other menu, I can hit up. I can walk up. All that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. So then I put in Fire Red, and I was like, okay, let me see if it was on Fire Red. Because if it was on Fire Red, I know I'm not crazy. So I plug in Fire Red. I hit D-pad up. It brings me to the help menu. And I was like, oh, that's weird. I really don't remember encountering this during Poke Will, But maybe it did happen. And I'm just... So then <laughs> I'm like... I, I do all that and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to play this way. I, I'm not mad or anything. I'll just keep playing it this way. I, I can't go up in that one screen. And so then I, I was like, oh, I should probably update my analog pocket because there's new cores out and everything. And they had a new thing out. And literally the analog pocket new uh, patch <laughs> has under its patch notes for the GBA says fixed LR glitch. So it was thinking oh. I was pressing L and R. And that's why it was showing the help menu and not going up because I haven't discovered the help menu in Emerald yet or whatever menu is supposed to be there. So 
Uh, I updated it, and guess what, folks? I can choose my Pokemon whichever direction I would please. Now. Man, that is like that's like the best feeling when you're like, man, this is fucked. I I gotta go down a debug path, and then you find patch notes, and like the first or second thing is like your exact issue, and they're like, oh. we fixed it, and you're like, whoo, don't have I was to worry like, about that so, anymore. Oh, I mean, speaking of that, I got down a whole rabbit hole today because I'm recording Last of Us off my PS5 in 4K. Well, I'm recording it in 4K into OBS at 1080p and it was chugging and I couldn't figure out why and my PCI Express lane is only using four instead of eight connections on it so I was like spending all day trying to figure out why it was doing that and I still haven't figured it out so if anyone knows why my Blackmagic Duo Link Quad won't connect to all the PCI slots I mean my only recommendation is they they give you speeds for the slots, and then they also give you like. But if you have two things plugged in, fuck yeah. your speeds. If you have three things plugged in, you're really fucked. So you make it could just be I, your graphics card is stealing it in a way. That's what I think. So instead of worrying about that, I'm just gonna lower the PS5 to 1080p and record it to yeah. 1080p. Either um, that, or if you have your camera plugged in at the same time to the same capture card, maybe unplug that. Even though you're not yeah, using it, it may be yeah, stealing. That could be. Um, so yeah, Pokemon Emerald, I, I'm having fun with. It's nice and relaxing to just play a Pokemon game uh, and not have to report back to everyone every week and play it on stream. Not have to um, do homework. Yeah, I beat the first gym leader with my Wingull. It was a rock gym leader and he just water spouted all over them uh, and sense. leveled up a bunch because he was only like level six and they were all like level 12. <laughs> Uh, which felt great. Um, and a lot of the Pokemon in this one, I don't necessarily know. Uh, like, I know a couple of them, but some of them are more new, which is nice. Um, and then finally, finally, I started playing Tunic off of one Zach from Save Data's recommendation in the... Hey. Uh, no, 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 no. I've been saying for like three months that somebody else needs to play Tunic because it may be a game of the year contender. How dare you? I've got well, it on my Switch. I haven't booted it up yet. I I played Tunic when it first came out. Um, mm, and I was like, okay with it. And then you brought your whole thing where you said it wasn't great. And I just agreed with you in my head. I was like, yeah, if it didn't work for Ian. It didn't work for me. And then when Zach said it was really good, I was like, okay, Ian's an idiot then. Um, so I got to go check it out. Anyways, I'm having an absolute blast with it. Um, I just... I had sent my top 10 list to Karen for her tabulation and I played about an hour of tunic and I quickly went and edited my message to move tunic up more because I hit a spot that was like, whoa, um, in that game. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's like a legend of Zelda link to the past Zelda -like, type yeah. game where you're a little Fox. You have a sword and shield you kill things, and the whole crux of the game is that they slowly reveal how the game works to you through these manual pages that you pick up that have drawings on them. They have some stuff translated. It's also in like a weird alien fantasy language. So you're like piecing things together. As you get more pages, you're like, oh, I could have done this thing for a while. Or not for a while, but yeah. you're like, oh, I know where to go now. Or, hey, I can go here. There's also like secret paths like Dark Souls. Once you know about them, you can go that way. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it has the combat is its weakest point, um, and I don't enjoy it that much. I have not switched it to an easier combat mode or the no fail situation. The first boss I fought was extremely hard. The second and third bosses were very, very easy. Um, I don't know if that's because I was getting better at the game or learning their patterns better. Um, but the storytelling and the way it's revealing these pages and kind of making you go, oh, or, oh, my God, I need to stop doing this because this is the worst thing I've ever witnessed in my entire life. Um, that sort of reveal and stuff is really cool and neat. Uh, so that part of it I'm, I'm enjoying. And I, I was expecting it to be like a fantasy game and it's not. It becomes like there's like some sci fi stu stuff in it, some post apocalyptic stuff in it that I really wasn't expecting. Um, so yeah, that's Tunic. Um, I'm going to play it some more. It might move up my list more, but it hasn't so far. 
Um, I feel like it's it's one of those games that does not that first hour or 90 minutes is not necessarily a great representation of the game and can be a little off putting and it buries a bit too much a lot of the charm and surprises. So that, that's why I was like, I was like, I'm hearing great things about it. I've been spoiled a little bit. I know there's great stuff. I can't push past it. So somebody else try it because I want to make sure that I'm not tanking it for all of Subpixel, you know, so I'm glad you're having fun yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. And I pl I played it out of sequence. I realized there was this whole area you were supposed to go to first, and I just walked the other direction and, like, got... You can, like, you get your sword and all that sort of stuff, and then I came back, and I was like, oh, I was supposed to do all this stuff first. Um, but, yeah, great game. Um, Jake, I'm going to have you go I'm going to shotgun these and not talk about some of them because we're going to probably talk about them at length for game of the year discussions true but i'm just gonna list them all off and then y'all can ask me things about them there's only one good game on this list so <laughs> only one it's a long list i had i took so much pto and then we had like bonus vacation days holiday days that i didn't realize so i've just i played a lot so i've been playing elden ring death stranding tiny metal cult of the lamb I played Inscription before the break, but I said that I'd come back and talk about it after I played it. So Inscription is on this list. Um, I rolled credits on Fallout New Vegas, and I've been playing a lot of Vampire Survivors. Uh, let's talk about Inscription, because that's not a that's not a goatee conversation. Well, it yeah. was last year. Um, obviously, loved it. Fucking incredible. <laughs> well, okay, wait, um, quick I, question. Yeah, you played it on the Switch, right? Mm hmm. There's a part late in the game when you're fighting a boss and on the Steam version, they they have you pick files from your hard drive and the size of your of your file determines how weak or powerful the card is. Mm -hmm. What does it do on Switch? Uh, the same. As you pick files off your Switch? No, it's still the facade of like like a a Windows user interface. Um, oh, but it's just a bunch oh. of generic files and stuff. Yes. No, no, it's files specifically related to the the FMV, the guy oh, who's in there. Okay. That's a good fact simile. Because on the Steam version, you are literally picking you, you're your going through files. your hard drive picking That's your files. Awesome. So like I like that. I got like like I had I had something we shot on my camera in 4K, so I had a 50 gigabyte video <laughs> file that yeah. I was just like, boop, that's the one right there. Yeah. I think I think I had a movie. No, I had one of the local chats in my downloads folder. So it was like four gigs or something from Twitch. It was just yeah. like the most powerful card. Oh, and then the other one, the other one was the other one was find your oldest file. And I found some files that I transferred over from college that were from like 2007, I think. Oh, so pre-college. Yeah, there yeah, were some so mislabeled the, files from the 70s. for the console ports. It is like you said, it's a facsimile. It's the in the in game guy's okay. computer. It's not that's your cool. own computer, but that's super awesome because uh, that's definitely a, the kind of thing um, that like Pony Island and the Hex would do. Yeah. Where it's getting stuff from your computer or from your Steam account. They do the part where um, the I guess this game's been out for a while. Can I talk about kind of spoilery? Oh, thing? yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. When the cards become people on your friends list. Yes, um, it's just the your switch friends. And that's I, cool. I knew that so I knew something like that was going to happen. I think I went back and I watched all of your go got dis go goatee discussions about it. And yeah. um, I think a little bit of this, like the the big moments were maybe a little lost on me because I have played Daniel Mullen's other games before this. And so some of those kind of bigger twists, I still got to those points and I was like, oh yeah, that's great. Yeah. But it wasn't like as mind blowing, but no super solid. I think it took Clown. me a lot longer to kind of get out of those first couple hours because the, the, the card playing experience is so good that I kept yeah. just playing and playing and playing and then realizing like, wait, there was a thing that I was supposed to like <laughs> keeping yeah, an eye like, out yeah, for. There's something over here I got to like, do. Yeah. So I was like, I did a lot more of those cycles than I think I needed to, but it's up the, the experience of that was just so good. Like, yeah. Good inscription. 
Inscription is so good because I, I've talked about this before with games and movies, but, you know, as 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 somebody who's called a contrarian, like I have very high standards, which means 90 percent of stuff is just like shit. And there's a little bit that is like a solid seven. And the problem with that is that I playing a lot of games. You can get in this rut where you're just like games are shit. Games are shit. Even the best ones are mediocre. And you're like, yeah, I guess that was good, but I didn't really like it that much. And then you play something like fucking inscription and you're just like, no, games are good. And I do have standards. It just turns out there's very few games that meet them. And so like inscription and a couple others, it just like blows your socks off. Mm. And and that's what made I think I think that's what made our last year game of the year up until inscription like we weren't planning on doing any game of the year. And in my head, I was like, what is the game of the year? Like, what's my pick? And I was like, maybe this, maybe that. But as soon as this inscription hit, like that game is such an incredible like tour de force and mm-hmm. just just like, oh, my God. And it's it's hard to explain or overstate how impactful and how incredible the experience of playing that game for the first time. Mm-hmm. And so I'm glad you finally got to do it. Yeah, because I knew they had they had spoiled the FMV stuff in one of the trailers. And so that I was expecting. Yeah, I, was, I can't you, fucking believe they did that. I didn't I get was, spoiled, but when they told me that, I was like, that's crazy. Yeah, I was not expecting when the game turns into like like a like a top down. Yes. Like, oh, like, yeah. Like Zelda type uh, game. Yes. Like, that's super cool. I, I don't know if I mentioned the game, game of the year this year. too. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I don't know if I don't know if I mentioned it during game of the year, but when I was playing the game and I beat that first section and then it turned into the fucking FMV, I was just like like I literally backed up from my computer and I was just like hands on my knees just staring at the screen being like what the fuck is happening? And Maggie came in and she's like what is wrong? What are you are you just watching YouTube and I'm like I was playing a game and it turned into <laughs> this and I don't know what's going on. That game's fucking incredible. There was one incredible. of those FMV parts where it's like, you know, it does all like the screen distortion, but then for like two frames, it's like a post-it note with some stuff written on it and I paused oh, yes. it and I screenshotted it cuz I'm like this is certainly going to be something. And then yeah. it wasn't. Or maybe it was, and I just didn't find the right there, thing. Well, but. there is there is the the ARG in reality from clues based on the game. Yeah. So there is I like I figured a if anything, ARG it happening. was like a real life ARG that I was yeah. not. Yeah, didn't they meet him in the in? woods? Like, maybe I know that. I don't he know if it was Daniel Mullins or the guy did. who played the character. Oh, that would be super fun. No, the guy who played the character has a real YouTube channel now where he is like he's not part. He's He's one of the key people in the ARG community. Like he doesn't have inside info, but he got so into the role that he played and everything that he's like, I'm making the real channel. And now it's just about figuring out this ARG of this game that I was part of. I love it. God, what an incredible. No game. one is doing it like Daniel Mullins. No. Um, I do. I do have two more questions. Number one, what's mm-hmm. tiny metal? Tiny metal is. I was just on like I Googled like Advance Wars knockoffs the other day because I really mm-hmm. wanted something to scratch that itch. And I found this game mentioned on, I think, maybe like a rock, paper, shotgun list. Um, I wasn't su- I played like two hours of it. I wasn't super thrilled. It has like a similar art style to what the like the reboot camps that are coming out. And I'm just mm-hmm. not that into it. And it's made by a Japanese studio and the localization is bad. Oh, um, I've seen I've seen there's a character that wears headphones and I have seen them in pictures. I'm surprised I've seen it's um, this game. yeah, like the, the localization is just not good. Like I was actually I felt like Feet the picks. opening. There's like an opening crawl that goes on for a while and I actually had oh. trouble reading it. <laughs> um, I'm like, wait, what is this saying? What is it doing? <laughs> it's a time of civil war. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Galactic uh, civil war. Second question. Sorry, last question. Yeah, shut the fuck. Yeah. Um, Elden Ring, two part mm. question. Mm. Number one, what is your Soulsborne experience before Elden Ring? And number two, how are you liking it so far? Zero Soulsborne experience prior to this. Um, okay. It's maybe a little too opaque for me. 
um, and maybe a little too aimless. Like I know I talked about in the Islanders video and then Will and I can't remember if we talked on stream or just off sides about it, that I, I like having a little bit more direction. Yes. Um, yeah. Than just going off oh, and doing my thing. I think it, there were bits i only looked up one like three hours in i was like i just i want to look up like a beginner's tips youtube guide or something and so i did watch one of those and then i was like oh i can get spirit ashes to summon companions in battle I'm like that seems like something i'd like to have um and just a couple other things that i've found along the way that i i would like some amount of guidance for there have been some really neat moments of encountering an NPC <laughs> some random place and then they're like hey you should go check out such and such and I'm like oh I walked past that I remember where that <laughs> is let me go check that out the um, so it does have really nice moments like that of kind of organic kind of discovery and obviously the world is huge um, and I I'm, I vibe with the aesthetic and just kind of the texture of it all just yeah. really weird grimy fantasy world um but it's i don't know i i got i beat margit because that was what was listed on the goatee discussion of get I to this point can believe will put that on there that's um, that's too far and i did it Wait, did but you i put that i on don't there? i don't think i put that it on says there. it says beat margit so, five to ten so hours we, so we have a goatee nominee list and it basically says like, hey, you should play this game because we're going to discuss it at the end of the year as a potential top 10. But we also have a little section that says, like, how much of this do you need to play? It's not a hard requirement, but the idea is, hey, you should play this much and that will tell you whether or not you like the game. And somebody put beat Margit on there and, and I like, did it, took, it. it took you nine hours, right? I think it took yeah, me just about. I think it took me about 12, but it's because like I went there early and then I was like, I can't beat you. So I dicked oh, around I for a while and then came well. back. Yeah. And I that's especially knowing you're fresh to the genre. That's that's harsh. Sorry, it was I, I mean, put it there it February was, 28th, 2022. I, wrote I did. <laughs> so it was not it was I think I'm level 22. Um, I'm in the 20s. Mm -hmm. um, and I put most of those stats into vitality just because I wanted yes. a bigger health bar because the health bar you start with is yeah. teeny tiny. tiny. So, um, yeah. Yes. No, I was just going to say you need to play Case of the Golden Idol because I need some allies on my side when it okay. comes to there's a giant fucking fight for number one on Game of the Year list in pretty yes. much every every gaming organization and a lot of people want to put Elden Ring. I don't think it belongs up there at number one. It's so not you... up there for me. Hell yeah, boys. I got um, an ally. Yeah, so I beat I beat Margit using the wolves, the spirit wolves that you can summon, and nice. the companion, Same. like rando companion. And yep. I I had dumped a lot of skills or a lot of stats into like magic spells. Cause nice. It just moves too fast, and I wanted to yeah. not rely on my melee weapons because yeah. that's what was getting me hosed every time I tried to do it before that. But yeah, that's good to hear. Are you gonna Are you gonna keep playing it or not immediately? Okay, <laughs> I will probably go back to it every now and again because it is it is. I do find myself kind of compelled by it, and I want to kind of unravel what's going the on there. And there's um, a lot there and a lot of variety, so you can yeah. definitely come back to it. But I do yeah. wish, like uh, like Tim Rogers talks about, he wants certain games to just have an I get it button, where you're like, okay, I get it, and then yeah. you click that button and move on to the next thing. Um, but um, yeah, I think it depends on how much more brutal the boss fights get. What, what are you I'm playing it on? Xbox? Okay, I was going to say, if you if you do play it more uh, and you want to play with someone, let me know because we can do the worst combat or co op system ever to play together. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, it's not worth going through the system just to play no. together. I mean, it, it's it super easy if you need me at a boss fight, it's less easy if you need me not at a boss fight. I was not yeah. thrilled with the invasion mechanics because suddenly it was like someone's invaded you. And what you know, you know, what's funny is I don't, I 
how early you are, I don't think that you've necessarily been invaded by another player. You've probably done one of the fake invasions where it's really an NPC that comes in. They think yeah, it was, was a fake invasion because it happened to me three times and it was the same yeah. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's a... there Because invasions in Dark Souls and Elden Ring are part of the lore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like they're so same thing. Do. Yeah, so same thing, but different people and they teabag you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're jerks. Actually, uh a large majority of the people in the souls community who invade you are usually polite <laughs> and not. Yeah. Cause if they're, they're still, still playing it, they're you, not so playing it them. to be a dick. Right. Um, they're invading. But then you have the people who, who come to protect you, <laughs> which is even better. Um, Anyways, you see the heavy, heavy time? game, of, heavy game of the year. Discussions can be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, Jake, um, how's fallout new Vegas and why is it the best game you've ever played? Um, I rolled credits on it. I think congratulations narratively very good yeah what'd you choose everything in between the narrative real clunky and I don't care for it yeah um, I and that's not age either that's just that's just relying heavily on Bethesda it's, yeah it's a little bit of the age it's a little bit I just I don't think the gunplay is that good even for the that's, era like Bungie not was age. doing it better <laughs> oh yeah a, but also there is some age on it, yes, but I played that. I was so excited. I played that game when it came out, and it was clunky at the time. So I will say, if you're not using Vats for every combat situation, then even well, using Vats, I though. I actually I encountered. I don't know if it was a bug or what, but sometimes I would go into Vats, and then like it would fire the round, and then it and then it would, would sit there for about there. thirty seconds. Yeah. Yep. Is that <laughs> that is okay. the best. Though. That's just that part is, of it. I think that That's is charm. simply sometimes the, it kills me. I think that's the 360 like backwards compat version on this because it did not do that on the PC. It did not do that on the original 360. But yeah, it happens. I've had to restart my game because it's done that a couple nice. times. Um, so I, I kept thinking to myself as I was playing it, I kept thinking back to Game of the Year discussions and I was like, Citizen Sleeper is so good because it has a big, sprawling, expansive multi-thread narrative but getting between those points is so much quicker because the 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 gameplay is so much tighter it's just the dice rolls and it's moving around to nodes and i kind of wish there was like a a version of fallout new vegas that was that of just like traveling around the different story beats ian to double back to your question i just went with mr house and mr house owns new vegas um, Damn. I think I did that too, right? Because what are the other options? It's NCR and it's the NCR or the Yes Man or Caesar's Legion. Oh, and I did. The yes I think Man I did is like yes independent Man. New Vegas. When, yeah, when I, I started yeah. my recent play of New Vegas, I walked into Mr. House's like four hours in, walked up into his hotel, lockpicked the door, hacked into the thing, killed his dead bot, his his cryo tube where he's sleeping. Mm-hmm. And then the it like wrong, it was yeah. like it was like, oh, you beat the game. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. So I reloaded my save and just <laughs> went back and did other things. And Jeez. so I've been doing other things for 60 hours. But see, my favorite part about New Vegas is wandering. I just walk around everywhere. That's my yeah. least favorite part. I don't fast travel unless I'm going back Weird. to a place. I've, I've been, been loving like. Death Stranding, but I did not. The the, the the overworld walkabouts in new vegas i did not oh, care for. it's so good you just come across stuff and the, the other re- reason i said to use vats all the time is i believe even if you're sh- just shooting at things you're not it's still using percentages to shoot things that's why i sure. just use vats yeah so it time. doesn't feel great yeah yeah um, the combat so in fallout has never felt great even my fallout 4, it's my big problem good. with the exploration is i would explore for a while and i would get lost in the exploration of it but it only auto saves when you go in and out of spaces Ooh. unless you yeah. it manually save. So I would like get a bunch of really cool stuff just because I'm just like walking around the desert and then stumble around a corner and there's a death claw and it kills me. And then I'm like, I've lost like 45 minutes. And I wasn't yeah. thrilled. Yeah, that happened to me. Like, <laughs> I've been level 50 for like 40 hours. So it's like nothing occasionally something will kill me or surprise attack actually the reason i haven't been playing it a lot is i'm in the stupid final dlc which is actually the first dlc um and you're stuck in a stupid place and i can't get out of there and i just don't want to play the dlc anymore Mm -hmm. so i haven't touched the game because i don't want to play when i blew up the brotherhood of steel nice 
Nice. I, I, them. I just, the most recent thing before the DLC is I lifted the the B2 bomber from the bottom of the lake. Which was was that, cool. I expected that to show up at the Battle of uh, the Hoover Dam. And it didn't? I th- no, I think the boomers come and help you. I think time-wise, they didn't, like, it's only been like a week or two, supposedly. Mm. It's not like they got it working. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, so my only other question, well, actually, I do want to hear about Death Stranding. It's great. I do love Hideo Kojima's $300 million walking simulator. No, it's like Uh, a $3 million super low budget. Oh, was it? Yeah. Um, Yeah. I'll look it, I'll look it up. I think it's a hundred talking about it. I'm super into it. I love that the triggers, both triggers are just holding the strap of your backpack as you wander around. Um, I'm in chapter three um nice i'm in the 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 i think it's fragile i think it's the name of the chapter she's not I, that fragile i've just gone across the lake um, nice yep and i i believe that's where i stopped but um no i'm super into it yeah and chapter I'm, three is where it opens up i guess like yeah yet, oh, no yet i'm to... telling you i'm telling you chapter okay. three is like is like the place to be it's where mm-hmm. everything opens up you can get trucks you can start building highways like that is the open world because everything before that has been like, un- fun. I have you. not unlocked bridges still won't let me take a truck, but I did steal a truck from a mule camp yes. using yes. that to, to ferry a bunch of cargo around. I did that for a while, too. It's oh, I don't want to play Death Stranding. I'm very into it and I'm very into whatever the heck is up with this big high concept speculative fiction nonsense that Hideo Kojima is up to. And I like that the voice actor they got for Guillermo del Toro's face kind of sounds like Guillermo del Toro. It's pretty convincing. Yeah. And, and it's still uh, weird. That it's just, he's just in this game. And I don't know what Nicholas R- Ryan, Ryan, Ryan and Ryan Ruffin Ruffin. sounded like beforehand. So. I know. I don't know. And I haven't watched enough interviews with him yeah, to know. Get, you know who would be great in that game is um, why can't I think of his name? The trees are screaming. Um, Werner Herzog. He'd be great. <laughs> Maybe he'll he's be so in number good. two. Ian, are you I frozen or are you just really into whatever no, you're he reading? just doesn't move. I'm trying to find... Oh, the developers estimate the product... No, sorry, that's control. Where the fuck is Death Stranding? I can't... I thought it was I'm, I'm having trouble finding... I'm having trouble finding the Death Stranding budget, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep looking. Um, yeah, Death Stranding... Oh, it's so good. Very into it. Yeah. And I've recorded, I've been recording all of it so that I can have like a the whole game in my oh nice video library. Um, I did oh, have fantastic. my the the one kind of clunky moment was that first boss fight. Um, I knew I had the blood grenades, but I couldn't find them in any of the radial menus, and mm-hmm. I had to like dump two of my ladders so that it would like auto populate in the radial menu. Because I couldn't figure out how to like put it That's there myself, fine. but then it was fine. The thing I did like about the boss battles is the like hundreds of things that come out to just throw things at you mm-hmm. to use yeah. in the battle, and it's just like it, it somehow just made the boss battles way easier um, because you could like I feel like games didn't used to do that. You would just get screwed over if you used up all your stuff, mm-hmm. but now games are like, yeah, we should probably let. They don't want to uh, soft lock you. Yeah, soft, like one soft, of the soft. tunic boss fights, the guy spawns enemies and you kill them and they give you magic juice back. Hmm. So it's like well, that's like the birth of the lambs ads. like that too. Yeah. Um I'm glad you like Death Stranding. Vampire Survivors, I'm assuming you're also enjoying. Mm-hmm. I don't know how uh close I am to unlocking everything. I think I've unlocked eleven characters. 11 so there's 12. There's the unlocks menu, which basically tells you like yeah, X that's out like of 150. The... Yeah. Oh. It's like, okay. Yeah, that's like relics, characters, all the sure, sure, stages. Sure. So that's I think that's the best way to gauge. I don't want to say your progress of the game because it's not like you have to finish it, but that right. basically will tell you how how much of the game you've unlocked. Yeah, it's neat. Hell of good. Fun. Um. Better than other. Awesome. Is that? Did you want to talk about Cult of the Lamb or? I mean, I can save that for the goatee discussion because it's on my yeah. list. Yeah, it'll definitely be on 
no one else's list. Um, actually, it's not. I, just, yeah, it's not. I love I haven't played it. So Animal Crossing, but with ritual sacrifice. It's good. What's it's not true. to love? I just like ritual sacrifice. Honestly, you may like it better than I did because I had to stop playing the game because it had a lot of bugs and major issues right after mm. launch. That's prevented me from completing it. Mm. You should be a patient gamer like Jake. You should sh- be a shut more the fuck I'm up a, gamer. I'm pr- a procrastinator. <laughs> I was just yeah. trying to shotgun all this stuff at the end of the year. Damn. Okay, that means it's time for Ian. God, we didn't even get to... Oh my god, you better talk fast. Yeah, I, I played a lot. I'll do the Jake method. I'll, I'll talk about all the games I've played last peak, last week. Pokemon Scarlet, Point B, Evil West, Vampire Survivor, Sports Story. So let me hit the quick ones first. Uh, Vampire Survivors, can't stop playing that fucking game. Uh, I've been unlocking a lot of stuff. It's just a great podcast game, and I really need a podcast game right now. And also just like a sit there and chill and unwind game because my life is stressful. And Vampire Survivors is great. Um, Point P is a mobile game, but it kept popping up on a lot of 2022 game of the year lists. So I uh, played it and um, it's kind of like it's a mobile game. It's kind of like Downwell. If you remember Downwell, you're falling mm-hmm. into a well and you're shooting down to kind of jump a little bit and you're shooting enemies shut the fuck up will um but point b you're going up and you're like swiping to jump and it pretty quickly introduces some cool mechanics like there's like a big guy and he's like i want juice and it needs to be a red berry and a blueberry and which means you have to touch a red berry yeah you got to touch a red berry and a blueberry in the air before you land again and then you can get like a double jump and you get like bouncy and then there's enemies that you got to land on but not touch and it's pretty cool. I only played it for about 10, 15 minutes. I don't think I'm going to play any more of it because <laughs> it's a fucking mobile game. Like, I don't. Yeah. It's it, the problem with mobile games is mobile games need to be easier than normal games because the controls are inaccurate and you're just sitting down <laughs> and playing them for like five, 10 minutes at a time. Right. I was and watching prob- someone play Fortnite on their phone. Yeah, fuck those people. They're fucking idiots. <laughs> uh, but the problem with Point B was airport. like it pretty quickly becomes a little bit more difficult and i'm like i don't want to sit here like retrying and swiping a lot to like get these jumps right because the other thing is like with the double jump you're like jumping and then you gotta swipe in air and aim it and i was just like nothing against the game but i'm not the type of person that sits here and wants to play a difficult game on my phone especially one that is not like not like turn based or take your time it is like a no you got to do reaction platformer type thing based off swipe so nothing against the game but it ain't for me um i also played some evil west uh evil west i think the best way to describe it um was dan Riker kept talking about how it is an xbox 360 ass game like if you think about that xbox 360 era of games that are just like over the top i'm a cowboy and i kill vampires but it feels really good and it's like a it's i guess the closest the combat you could say is kind of like god of war where like if you take five or six hits in a row, you will die. And so you really got to focus on like it's not as bad as like Dark Souls combat level, but it's like you got to focus on like I need to actually dodge. I need to pay attention to what this enemy is doing and hit them with the right combo. And instead of just like mashing the punch button, I need to try and, you know, either uh, stun them so I can get a heavy attack off or try and push them into an environmental hazard. It's pretty cool. It's got a lot of style on it and the combat feels great. I just don't think I'm in the mood to play it right now. So, but I wanted to give it a try. It's one is of those goatee possibles. Is this the one that was by the, the by Praise Game Director, or was that Weird West? I'm not sure. Oh no, that's probably Weird West, which was okay. like the 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 like isometric. isometric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was Evil West Sports Story. I've been playing some Sports Story because I fixed my Switch, and Yay. I played about two three hours of it and i can't play anymore because i hit a game breaking bug mm. yeah i i literally tried this quest three or four times and there is something just not working and it's the type of thing where you're basically running around with a beehive on top of your head and you get close to bees and they go in the hive and it's like get the bees in the hive zero out of nine and i get up to like five out of nine or six out of nine and the rest of the fucking bees just don't go in the hive. And I tried like restarting the game, et cetera, et cetera. And it doesn't work. 
and they released some upcoming patch notes today. And one of the, like the third item on the list was like fixed bees hive. And their fix was their fix was if you can't get all the bees in the hive, just stand there. And after like a minute or two, it'll auto complete for you. Nice. And I'm like, yikes, mm-hmm. which um, we're short on time. So I won't talk about it too much, which ties into a uh, s- new story, which is going around, which is that there is a secret room inside of sports story. And if you get into that secret room, it's just a bunch of people who are game developers talking about how they uh, they are overworked and the game was too ambitious. I'll read you some of the quotes from these game developers. They're saying, quote, you might say we're experiencing a troubled development and, uh, quote, one might even venture to say we should have made the game work instead of adding features, unquote. So it's kind of a it's kind of a sad state where sports story is a bit too ambitious and they couldn't quite pull it off. And so you have a broken game and even some of the like basic golf mechanics that they change, people aren't happy about. So I, I may come back in another couple months and try sports story, but it's not in a good state to play it right now. I, I, I cannot recommend it in this state. Um, and then finally, I've been playing some Pokemon Scarlet. Uh, you know what? In the spirit, in the spirit of the new year and the new podcast format, let's spend some time talking about Pokemon Scarlet. Okay. Because did you guys ever have that like dream when you were a kid and you're playing these Pokemon games and you're like, wow, I can't wait for them to make a real Pokemon game that's like 3D and you're in the world and you're running around. You can go anywhere you want and it's all 3D. You guys ever have that dream about a Pokemon game? No, I did have that dream, but it was also always in VR. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. And they were naked. Honestly, I think a Pokemon game in VR would be too terrifying for me. Too terrifying? I don't want to see Pokemon like in the correct scale standing next to me. Mm. Anyways, um, so Pokemon Scarlet is that. But in the continuing multi-year like epic thematic like struggle I have been having publicly between indie games and AAA games, this is giving me everything I want. It's 3D. You can run around. You got all these Pokemon and they're just hanging out in the environment and you can see them. It's not a random encounter. <clears throat> but now that I have that, it's almost too AAA. It's too polished. It's too nice. I don't think I like it as much as like playing Pokemon White earlier this year where it's just like a normal ass fucking Pokemon experience. So I've played a little bit of it. First of all, it's nowhere near as bad as people are saying. Like, people are harping a lot on this game and the performance. The performance is not that bad. And the reason why I say that is, it is a Switch game. If I say that, you immediately know what it looks like, what frame rate it's running at, and all the graphical issues it has. Boom. Done. That's it. Like, it's not like it's crashing. It's not like it's constantly running at five frames per second. It is just a normal ass switch game. Like, yeah, it's probably running at 720p. Yeah, the textures are muddy as shit. Yeah, you can't show a lot on the screen, especially like distant views. But other than that, the game looks good. It's got a lot of style. It's got a lot of graphical pizzazz on it. Um, And I am kind of enjoying it. I think the problem is just that. Like I was going between one town and another, right? And a normal Pokemon game, you're like, yeah, get me in the wild. Let's do some random encounters. Like, let me check this little side path. Let me grab these items. And I started to do that in this. And I was going through this like desert canyon. And I was like, oh, there's a path over there. There's a path over there. Like there's a little cave entrance down there. There's like items over there. There's a Pokemon over there. There's a guy over there. And I was like, I don't really want to do any of that, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Like, it was too much. It was like sensory overload in a way. So I'm honestly not sure I'm going to play much more of the game other than like the three, four hours that I played. And I I don't know how much of that is a problem with the game itself or a problem with me and how I experience and prefer Pokemon. Um, I don't know. What are you what are you guys thoughts? I I know you guys probably haven't played it, but. I mean, I definitely remember after playing Arceus that I thought to myself, I'm like, "Ah, yeah, I just like the. I like the 2D ones more. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just tighter. And yeah. like, I like the idea, like you said, the idea of like the open world and being like, there's a Pikachu <laughs> and throwing a ball at it. Um, yeah. But um, 
yeah, it's just it's a bit too loose and too open. Yeah, I think I think that's really what it is, because the other thing is this game, Pokemon games are not necessarily about open world exploration. They are about the Pokemon, the battling of the Pokemon, the collecting of the Pokemon. And when you broaden it in the open world experience, it adds a little bit too much of that. I don't want to call it open world emptiness because I don't think that's here. I think there's actually pretty well designed open world here. It's just it's adding too much of the non collecting, non fighting, non badge Pokemon experience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, but just to round like, it out. Oh, you go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I you can't see the Pokemon in the Pokemon games that everyone loves. So why do you think making people see the Pokemon in the game? Like, you know what I mean? Like I go into roots and I'm like, Oh, I'd like to go through the grass to see who pops up, you know, versus, yeah, but that's Oh, there's the group you're... of Pikachu's. There's the group of. So I'm, I'm not saying this method is better. I think there needs to be a middle ground, but it is. You're a sicko. Because one of the big problems with Pokemon was you would walk through an area, you would be forced to walk through grass, and all of a sudden you're you're fighting the 20th fucking Diglett, you know? And you're just like, I'm done with you. But being in this, you can literally, like, like, like I was talking about going through that desert canyon. When I hit a point where I was like, fuck this, just get me to the gym, I just booked it. And I avoided all the Pokemon I can see. I don't think that's the preferred way, but at least I didn't have to, like, slug through an area where I'm like, I don't care about catching any of these guys, and I'm going to, I'm going to keep hitting the right. same exact stupid low level Pokemon. It makes it much easier to skip that. But again, there needs to be a middle ground between the two. Yeah. But you can also do that in the older Pokemon games. Not really. You had to use a bunch of items well, to like use the do the repel and stuff. I mean, it's the same thing. I, I think there needs to be a medium between like, Hey, greatly reduce the number of random encounters, but don't remove them entirely. There should still be a little bit of like surprise and mystery and randomness in it. Yeah. I just um, don't like the concept of like the, the I, I didn't play Scarlet obviously, but the like RCS of like, Oh, there's the MMO group of Pikachu's. There's the MMO yes. group of whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah, it I don't did like feel that. a lot like, like, wow. And this, and just to say this one is 10 times better than, than, than Arceus. Cause, cause Arceus was just like, they were trying a lot of new stuff, but there was also a lot of half ass stuff. And like, from the start, this game just feels a lot more polished. It's got a lot more gameplay going on. It feels a little bit more traditional Pokemon, but in a way where it's not like like Arceus was them just like throwing a lot of shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. But this feels a lot more refined. Um, but I think honestly, the biggest takeaway from Pokemon Scarlet is this is not a bad game. People acting like this is a fucking train wreck are assholes. This game, the only the major problem with this game is the hardware that it's running on. It is not the game itself like like, yeah, sure. It's not incredibly optimized, but they're working on the fucking Nintendo Switch, which was which was underpowered at launch. What? Five years ago. Was it no six years Seven, ago? Almost eight. Was this 2017? 2017? 2017. That's like almost March 2017. six years ago. So like they are doing the best they can. They did knock it out of the park and make some like miraculously optimized experience. But to, for people to be like, this game runs like shit, it's trash, it keeps crashing, etc. I wasn't experiencing any of that. Yeah, it looks bad. Yeah, sometimes the frame rate drops, but I'm blaming that on the console. The game itself is great. But you're also two two months of patches later. I mean, yes, but I do see a lot of performance issues with this game. Oh, totally, totally. I'm just saying and there were worse people, issues at launch. Pe people weren't really complaining that much about crashes, though. They were just complaining no. more about, like, graphical weirdness. Bugs. Like, for example, Bugs. like, if if you're going through a city and people are, like, 80 feet away from you, their walk animation is, like, literally two frames per second. <laughs> like, like shit like that is still 100% in the game. So, so that's the point is, like, it is easy to look at this game and be like, look at those fucking jackies. What is that, an N64 texture? But... That's stupid. Blame that on the console. The game itself is great. If you're interested in Pokemon at all and you like Pokemon, you should absolutely try Scarlet. Yeah, or I'll, I'll be interested to see how the new Zelda shapes up against it as far as performance. I mean, I Breath wanted, of the Wild had performance issues. So. I wanted yeah, but Breath of the Wild was better Snake. than Arceus. Yes, yes. Probably better but than Scarlet. At this point, but they need to take the Switch out back and shoot it. We need oh, the Switch yeah. Pro, the Switch 2, 
yesterday. Switch to electric boogaloo. Yeah. Totally. Um, it's at the point. I'm just going to say it. It's at the point where every time there's a switch game that I'm tempted to play, I ask myself the question and I take longer than is comfortable to answer it. The question being, should I just pirate this fucking game and emulate it because I won't have to deal with performance problems? I, honestly, I was like, should I? I was like, you've been talking about it enough where I'm interested in playing Pokemon Scarlet, but I could just play it on my Steam Deck. <laughs> I mean, I think, again, this is not the 100 percent legal foolproof way, but I think a way to feel comfortable about that is buy a copy of the game and then fucking emulate it. Oh, yeah, totally. Nothing wrong with just that. Just do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I did want to mention before we uh, end the show, I did um, 100% a Tinykin. I was very excited about that. I finally I went back. I know, I didn't even. I just rolled credits. Yeah, I rolled credits, I, and I was like, I'm not going to go get every pollen. That's I crazy. was like 20 pollen away anyways, and I was like, I spent like two hours trying to find it one night, and then two months went by, and I booted the game up and found everything in 15 minutes, and then they were nice. like, oh, there's these new speedrun challenges and no achievements were added or tied to them. And I said, no, thank you. <laughs> Hell yeah. Quit, I quit the game and uninstalled it. Tinykin, um, better than Elden Ring. Uh, not according to my list, but it's close. <laughs> <laughs> Can we look? Let's just we're, we're, we're too antsy here. Where's Elden Ring? Give me the number on your list. I'll For give me? you the number. Yeah. And I'll tell you my number. Tell me your you show me yours first. OK. I will be I will be honest. I put both Elden Ring and Gran Turismo on the list I sent to Karen without having played Hell them, yeah. knowing that I would eventually play them and presume that they would be on my list. Uh. Um, Elden Ring is currently number nine, though I don't I don't know if it will stay there. I don't That's know if it'll be in my top ten at all. It is number eight for me. Wow. It's number one for me. You fucking really? you, of course, you fucking games GameStop stooge, you piece of shit <laughs> from software shill. This is gonna be. I see. I I thought it wasn't because you were on board that until Tinykin came out and you were like Tinykin's. Oh, Tinykin's, Tinykin's, Tinykin's game of the year. But yeah. Elden Ring is the best experience I had playing a game this year. Got it. See so your scrub. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait for game of the year. It's gonna be. I I think last year nothing against last year but inscription was such a clear and obvious winner mm -hmm. to people who play and actually love games aka us and I'm... not most of the games media so it, it made the discussion a little bit lame whereas this year like let's have a good fucking discussion Listen, elder rings my game of the year i don't think it's sub pixels game of the year. Well, it's inscription <laughs> i will also i'm row. not arguing with anyone i will acquiesce to everything or more no. i i'm sorry i don't mean to like take the knives out and be like i'm gonna gut you all i i just i can't wait to have this discussion and i'm getting more excited about it because every fucking game of the year discussion i've listened to so far for this year and every article i read is just like yeah here's a bunch of good games and oh yeah number one of course is Elden Ring. how could we put anything else and it's like no, that prop the game has fucking flaws. Like at least have the discussion and point out the flaws in it as opposed to just, you know, by rote handing it number one. And that's what's making me even more excited to have our discussion where we're we're gonna do better than them. We're actually gonna dig into the details here and pit yeah. these games against each other and have and a nice Elden critical Ring discussion. The game of the year. Now armored I, core six for answer. <laughs> five answers what is it what is six called again buyers of rubicon <laughs> yes oh. they they put a set of jeep on fire mm. that's <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a bad sci-fi 80s movie it was yes no all one. no that's the thing about mech mech media by and large yes. has to have some sort of stupid title it yes. can't be serious mech it has to through. be stupid Yes. Ro oh uh, yeah. What was it? Rogue Warrior? Mecha? No. Mecha Rogue, Rogue. A novel of of the Mecha Wars. No, the no. Armor sorry. Wars, the, I thought, I'm thinking I, of. Was, I thought it was infringing on Marvel's copyright. <laughs> What's the Mech Warrior game? It's like Rogue something. Rogue Legacy. There's a Mech Warrior game with Rogue in it. Probably. Um. Yeah. So that's just why we're excited by Game of the Year because look, I'm gonna throw it down. I feel like a lot of other organizations are fucking phoning it in this year. And we're about to kill it because we're going to have some games on our list that are not on anybody else's list, but they're bangers. And we're going to we're going to have some nice, deep discussion about this stuff. I'm excited. Have you played Gran Turismo yet, Jake? 
I have the disc right here. Oh, God. I need to play it. I I don't know if you heard, but hearing about you possibly playing it and Will purchasing it has made me want to play it. But I'm going to wait until I get my copy back from you because I've played it, but now I'm getting the itch where I'm like, oh, sorry. Shoot, I'll good. have to get, I'll have to play it this week. No, no, no. Send it back no, no. It's, I don't need it back immediately. It's just like one of those like, jealousy things where i'm like that game is mm. fucking good i could be playing that now so I'll, I'll get it back eventually but i'm so excited for you to experience it. this is your first gran turismo no i have played gran turismo was it two, two or three okay on but the, that's good i think on the original playstation yeah because again to spoil goatee discussion a little bit the major problem with gran turismo 7 is the number in the title it's not doing a whole lot new but I'm glad that you get to experience it with such a huge jump. Gap. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was thinking of Mech Assault. That's the game I was thinking. Now there yeah. is a Mech, Mech Assault. There's a Mecha book I've been wanting to buy called United States of Japan, which is supposedly like a spiritual successor to Man in the High Castle. Nice. But oh. it's a it's a Mech oh. story. I don't have my my I Ching book is in the other room. I think. Mm. I bought that after Man of the High Castle. I need, I need to finish that TV series. That TV series was interesting. I don't think I watched past season two. Were there three seasons or four seasons? I think at least three. I think I only watched the first two. Did they follow the book at all? No. No. Have you not uh, read the book? A tiny, tiny bit. And then they're pretty much on yeah, their own. They I've read the book, quickly. which is why I own an I Ching. It's sure. weird. Like, it's not super compelling, but it's well done enough that you're like... Yeah, mm-hmm. I guess I'll keep watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess so. I love Rufus Sewell in anything. Yeah. Any even old Damn Night Shyamalan film where the beach makes people old. I love fucking making... spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's get out of here. It's Ten twelve. I don't want to be here. Bruce anymore. Willis news. is dead. There was news this week. I didn't feel my story was interesting anyway, so. Yeah, nothing's interesting anymore, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I have been your host, Will Crosby. You can find Subpixel, subpixelfilms.com, going straight to our link tree, where you can see all of the hot, hot things we do, like our merch, or like our Twitters and the, the YouTube. Um, the song can't be over yet. No, we got 30 seconds. Don't worry. Folks, uh, joining us this week, Ian Gibson, at Think Gibson on the Twitter. Hi. Joining us also was, I almost called you Jeffrey. Jeffrey Terrio. Terrio. Uh, I've been called at, John and Jack in the school newspaper. So. <laughs> underscore Jake Terrio on Twitter or John at the school newspaper. Or Jack. Uh, we'll be back this weekend with some streams. Uh, Ian's computer is still broken, I think. They um, shipped the new CPU. Don't know when it's going to get the here. The new CPU. Man, the so 60 don't... second song isn't even long enough. We got to make it longer. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what we're doing this week. Actually, you know what we're doing? I downloaded 592 gigabytes of uh, DOS. Careful. Games. So oh, let's okay. do that uh, <laughs> this Saturday. Um, there are, there are, it did ask me if I wanted the adult games, and I said yes. So okay, good. That's well, the right only answer. A leisure, leisure but suit you know what? We probably should not stream those because during scan lines, we have come across an accidental tit or two, and oh. we don't want to do that on Twitch. Well, a tit more for than two. But they did. They did change. Like people were streaming immortality. It was an just odd has number banging. though, which is weird. Um, <laughs> apparently, you're allowed to stream nudity if it's not the point of the stream. So no to Rihanna Rouge, but yes to what was that one called? Blue Hot. Blue heat. Blue heat. No, like those would be fine because we're playing a game. We're not watching pornography. But but Rihanna Rouge is an adults only game. That is a softcore pornography. Well, game. yeah, I'm an adult and I can play that. I'll call my mom. Um, no honey the pop. Fucking, the fucking songs over. Get out of here. Bye, everyone. Have a lovely weekend. Bye.